Hi, this is CAD CAM Lessons. In this part of the FreeCAD series, you'll learn how to create solids with Revolve, cut material with Groove, and then massively speed up your workflow using Polar Pattern. By the end, you'll be able to build repeated features that automatically update when you change one sketch. We will now move on to another simple operation that allows you to create a solid based on a 2D sketch. Let's start a new project in the Part Design module. We select the parametric body here and we will start by creating a sketch. This time we will create a sketch on the XZ plane. We will draw a simple shape here. Select Draw Circle. Place the center of the circle on the X axis and draw a circle with a diameter of 30. Click the right mouse button to cancel this command. Press the D key. Click on the center of the circle and define the distance of the circle's center point from the origin of the coordinate system as 50 millimeters. We close the sketch. Another simple and basic operation for creating 3D solids in 3D CAD systems is the operation that allows creating a solid by rotating a sketch around a specified axis, and this is the revolve operation. Select this operation. Here by default, a solid was created by rotating this sketch around the vertical sketch axis. Here we specify the sketch axis, and in this case the vertical sketch axis coincides with the base Z axis. We can choose this axis. In such cases, I prefer to choose the base axes of the coordinate system, or for this operation, we can also use other geometry that will be the axis of symmetry. I will show you this in a moment. Next, we specify the angle at which we create the solid. By default, the solid is created at an angle of 360 degrees. So we have a rotation of the solid by a full 360 degrees here, but we can change this and create a fragment of such a solid. I will return to the value of 360 degrees here. I click OK and we have such a solid. Regarding this operation, the sketch for this operation can be more complex. It can be more complicated. Here, with this simple example, I just wanted to show you the principle of how this operation works. Now, for practice, I will create another sketch. I will also create a sketch on the XZ plane and create another circle. First, I select the external projection command and indicate this edge so that I can constrain the next circle to this line. And here I will draw a circle with a diameter of, for example, 10 millimeters and click the right mouse button. I click the toggle section view button to switch to the view on the sketch plane. Now I select this point. I select this point and choose the horizontal vertical constraint to place this point in one vertical line with this point. I close the sketch and select the revolve operation. Here too, by default, a solid was created by rotating this sketch around the vertical sketch axis. We can switch this to the base Z axis. And here, for example, let's enter an angle of 60 degrees. OK, and the solid will be created in this way. Here we can uncheck the reversed option, and then the solid will be created in this direction, or we can also check the symmetric to plane option, and then the solid will be created in two directions from the sketch plane. Click OK, and we have something like this. It is one solid. These two fragments of the solid have been joined together, but this solid is one single solid. Just like in the case of the extrude operation, and in the case of the pocket operation, where the extrude operation created a solid based on a sketch and the pocket operation removed material based on a sketch. So in this case, we have the revolve operation, which creates a solid by rotating a sketch around a specified axis. And we have the groove operation, which removes material based on a sketch by rotating the sketch around a specified axis. Now I will create another sketch. I will also create this sketch on the X Z plane. And here I switch to section view. I select the external projection command and create reference geometry to this solid. I click the right mouse button to cancel this command. And here, for example, I will create a triangle. I select draw triangle and draw a triangle more or less like this. Here I specify the dimensions of this triangle as 10 millimeters. The angle at this moment is irrelevant. I click the left mouse button to place the triangle vertex anywhere. Then I click the right button to cancel this command. 
And now I select this point and this point and press the V key to place these two points in one vertical line. I close the sketch. And now I select the groove operation and based on this we can remove material from the solid. Let's do it in this way for now. We remove material by rotating the sketch around the vertical sketch axis and in this case I will also switch to the base Z axis. And here we can remove it at a full angle of 360 degrees. I click OK and we have something like this. Now I go to edit this operation. Here we can, for example, change this angle to 60 degrees. I click OK, and that is how these operations work. These are simple operations to apply, but by combining these operations with each other, combining the extrude, revolve, pocket and groove operations, we can create really quite complex 3D models. Now we will move on to another simple operation. We will create a new project. And I will show you an operation that in certain cases can be very useful and can shorten the time of creating a 3D model. Let's create a new sketch on the XY plane. And here I select draw circle and we'll draw a circle with the center point at the origin of the coordinate system with a diameter of 100 millimeters. That is, we simply select draw circle, indicate the origin of the coordinate system as the place where we will place the circle center and then specify the diameter as 100 millimeters. We close the sketch and here we will create a solid by extruding this sketch, for example, to 15 millimeters. We enter the value 15, press enter, and now I will create another sketch on this face. I select this face. I select create sketch and here I draw a circle and place the circle center on the Y axis. When the Y axis is highlighted, I click the left mouse button and enter 10 millimeters as the circle diameter. I click the right mouse button to cancel the circle drawing command. I press the D key to activate dimensioning. I click the left mouse button on the center of the circle, and then I define the distance of the circle center from the origin of the coordinate system. I click the left mouse button to place this dimension, and as the dimension value, I enter 35 millimeters and press enter. I close the sketch and now I select the pocket operation and here is the pocket type. I select to first so that the pocket is made up to the first encountered feature. In this case the first encountered feature will be this face. Here in this case we can also use the up to face option and indicate this face or we can choose the to first option and the pocket will be made up to this face. I click OK to confirm this. And now I set the isometric view. OK. And I will create another sketch on this face. I click the left mouse button on this face and select the Create Sketch command. Next, I select the External Projection command to create reference geometry to this hole. And I select Draw Circle and draw a circle whose center will lie at this point. And I draw a circle with a diameter of 15 millimeters. I close the sketch, select the pocket operation, and here I create a pocket with a depth of 5 millimeters. I click OK, and we have something like this. And now I would like to create 10 such holes in this solid so that they are evenly distributed along a circle on this entire solid. Of course, we can sketch this. We can sketch each hole. We can apply the pocket operation. We can do it individually so that each hole is in a separate sketch. We can create 10 holes in one sketch and then perform one pocket operation. But in such cases, it misses the point. Because if these holes are to have the same diameter and are to be evenly distributed along a circle, we can use the polar pattern operation, which will make it much easier and faster. To do this, we select the operations we want to copy in a circular pattern. In this case, it will be these two operations. With the control key in the operation tree, we select these two operations. And then we select the polar pattern command. And here, as you can see in the preview, we already have a second copy of these holes made. And here we specify the parameters of the circular pattern. We specify the axis of the circular pattern. In this case, the normal sketch axis is selected by default. In this case, this axis coincides with the base Z axis. 
And here, as you can see, we also have the Select Reference option, which allows you to manually indicate any geometry, but we will get to that in further examples. This option will also be useful in the case of the revolve operation, but we will get to that. Next, we specify the angle at which we perform the pattern. By default, an angle of 360 degrees is selected, meaning this pattern will be performed on a full circle. We can change this, for example, to 180. Here nothing changed because we only have two elements, but if I add more elements, these elements will be copied only on an angle of 180 degrees. Here I will enter 90 now, and it looks like this. I return to the value of 360, and it looks like this, and here we specify the number of elements. I enter 10 here, and in this easy and quick way, we can copy features in a circular pattern. We click OK, and with literally a few clicks, we created such a solid. Of course, if there were 20, 30, or 50 of these elements, we could do it just as quickly. And using this operation has the advantage that if I now introduce changes, for example, in this sketch, and change the diameter of this hole from 10 millimeters to, for example, 5 millimeters, click OK, close the sketch. The diameters of the remaining holes have also been changed. If I now, for example, change the depth of this pocket from 5mm to 1mm, in the remaining holes this has also been changed. So, as you can see, in certain cases this can have a huge advantage and can significantly speed up and facilitate the creation of 3D models. Now you know how Revolve and Groove work, and how Polar Pattern can duplicate features in seconds while staying fully parametric. To see the next step, click the video on the screen or subscribe and continue the full series in the playlist.